My name is Andre Liebenberg, and I am the Chief Executive Officer of Yellow Cake PLC. Let me tell you a little bit about Yellow Cake and, and why it was established. Um, firstly, Yellow Cake uh, is a physical holder of uranium. So in, in some sense, we're like a uranium ETF, but in a corporate vehicle. So we don't have any uh, exposure to mining risk, uh, exploration, uh, geological processing risk. We have set ourselves up in, in a very low cost structure to minimize the, the leakage. And the key feature of our vehicle is that we have this annual $100 million contract with Kazanomprom, which is the world's largest and lowest cost producer of uranium. And it allows us to purchase up to $100 million of uranium each year uh, at the spot market price. And this option allows us to do all of it in one go, uh, multiple tranches or, or none at all. Uh, and the key determining factor of when we, uh, and if we do exercise the option, uh, really comes down to where our share price is trading relative to net asset value. Let me talk a little bit about the industry context um, for, for uranium. Firstly, uh, on the demand side, we, we are seeing steady, visible demand growth. It takes a long time to permit and build a nuclear reactor. So there's very good visibility as to where this uh, reactor build program is taking place. We've seen a sustained period of low prices basically since uh, the Fukushima event in, in uh, 2000 or well, 10 years ago, uh, as of this month. Uh, and those sustained low prices have led to supply cuts. Uh, it has led to uh, no, virtually no investment into new uranium production, which will be needed at, at some course point in time. And then uh, also last year with the first wave of the pandemic, we saw the impact uh, that COVID had on, on the production side. Um, you know, production forecast for last year was, was 140 million pounds and it ends up closer to 120 million pounds. Four countries in the world produce about 75% of, of global uh, uranium. So we continue to see uh, more risk to the supply side than the demand side. Uh, why purchase additional uranium now? Um, you know, we, we, we've seen a, a period, certainly for us, most of last year and the year before, where we traded at quite a significant discount to net asset value. Back end of last year, really the last quarter of last year, we saw a lot of investor interest into uranium equities. Uh, some companies are up two, three, four, five hundred percent. Uh, and uh, you know, the fact that uranium equities were, were going up and the uranium price really was tracking sideways to slightly down uh, gave us the opportunity to, to go into the market and, and raise money, which we did last month, um, in order to buy more uranium. Uh, if you also look at what, what's happened in the equity sector in uranium over the last uh, month, you know, I calculate something like half a billion dollars have been uh, raised by, by uranium companies in the equity space, which is, which is quite amazing. Uh, I spoke about, uh, you know, what our triggers are to, to exercising our option or to raising money and purchasing uranium. It really uh, relates to where we trade versus our net asset value. And you can see on this chart that uh, for a large chunk of last year and the back end of, of 2019, we were at quite significant discounts to, to net asset value. And then really uh, end of last year into, into the early part of this year, we started trading at a premium to net asset value. Uh, and and you know, thankfully and, and helpfully today, we're still at a premium to net asset value. And that really allowed us to, to go to market last month. We were aiming to raise around $100 million. The demand was so strong that we were able to upsize our equity raise to $140 million. Brief operating history of Yellow Cake. Uh, Yellow Cake was IPO'd in July of uh, 2018. We raised $200 million in an oversubscribed IPO. We raised a further $34 million in uh, April of 2019 to purchase another $30 million of uranium. And then uh, last year, when we were trading at a big discount to, to net asset value, we instituted a share buyback program because it was the cheapest way for us to buy uh, uranium was, was through the discount in our share price. 
And then, as I mentioned uh, very recently, we, we came to market, raised $140 million, uh, uh, $100 million of which will go to Kaz Adam Prom for 3.5 million pounds of uranium. And then in the last 10 days, we've purchased uh, another half a million pounds of uranium uh, in the spot market. So uh, for, for around $15 million. You know, why nuclear? Why uranium? Um, nuclear is the, the lowest non-carbon operating cost of, of megawatt per hour. Um, we see increasingly that nuclear is spoken about in the context of, of uh, renewables plus nuclear. So we think that the debate is shifting. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a massive tailwind for, for nuclear, but certainly the resistance to nuclear seems to be disappearing. Um, we've seen com countries adopt uh, carbon neutrality goals, Japan, uh, carbon neutral by 2050, and, and they are explicitly, explicitly including nuclear in that program. Here in the UK, we've seen uh, the, the 10 point green plan, which explicitly includes nuclear. China is talking about uh, carbon neutrality 2060 uh, and including nuclear there. Um, they, they have a big build program. And more recently, we've seen a lot of interest in these small modular reactors. They're not commercial today, but they, they will be in, in the five to 10 year time horizon. There are big companies like Rolls-Royce in the UK, GE, Hitachi, uh, Bill Gates, uh, countries like uh, Russia, China, the UK, Canada, um, all, all putting money into, into the space. Briefly on, on future demand, there are currently 442 operating reactors or operable reactors, uh, 53 under construction. Um, the biggest growth program that we are seeing is in China. China today produces around 50 gigawatts of, of energy from uh, nuclear. They are in their latest uh, 14th five-year plan announced that that will go to 70 gigawatts by 2025 and 100 gigawatts by 2030. So we're talking about a doubling in, in the size of, of the Chinese reactor fleet by, by the end of this decade. Uh, and, and you know th that's a very, very significant number. On the supply side, I mentioned uh, previously that the supply looks vulnerable. If we take today's spot price, around half of production wouldn't make money. Uh, the reason a lot of these producers are still producing is because they have uh, long-term contracts. But these contracts are rolling off. So un unless uh, the contracts are replaced at, at higher prices than the spot, uh, we're likely to see further, further production cuts. Uh, and talking about these production cuts, if you look at 2016 as, as the, 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 the peak of, of production at 160 million pounds, we saw that fall off to 140 million pounds in 2018 and 2019. And that really was on the back of uh, Kaz Adam Prom, uh, and, and Cameco announcing the big cuts that, that they did. Last year, with the impact of COVID, we lost a further 20 odd million pounds out of the spot market. So we had a you know, production base of around 120 to 125 million pounds against consumption of around 175 million pounds. This year, the forecast is for around 128 to 130 million pounds of, of uranium production, again, against consumption consumption of 175 million pounds. So we're, we are seeing a, a, a market that is in deficit as, as of today. And then looking forward, um, you know, the, the chart here on the screen is the uh, WNA uh, forecast. It's the, the mid forecast. And, and that shows that we're in deficit today and, and, and there will be a growing supply deficit. So unless and until uh, you know, uh, capital is, is put into new mines, uh, we, we are going to potentially see a supply crunch. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the best of the new mines probably need contracts of, of $50 or above. So really, in, in conclusion, um, you know, Yellow Cake provides uh, investors with pure exposure to the uranium price. We don't have any operating risks. We have a low cost structure. Uh, so that, uh, you know, there's, there's not a lot of leakage. Uh, and we've access to significant quantities of uranium at the spot price, which, which allows us to grow um, our, our company, as, as we demonstrated recently. Um, the market outlook, again, demand, it's, it's, it's visible and growing, probably one and a half to 2% a year through to 2040. 
um, you know, utilities have yet to come to the market to start contracting in, in any material way. Uh, and those contracts will be need, will need to be replaced. You know, in a couple of years time, the US uh, utilities are probably only 50% covered and, and declining. And then the supply side, as I've mentioned, you know, we're in a supply deficit today. Very little investment has gone into future supply. And, and we've seen, uh, you know, the, the impacts of COVID. So, you know, think a very, very interesting context and, and time for uranium and for yellow cake. Thank you.